In this video, I'm going to walk you through the three different types of phone numbers you can use in Follow Boss and which one may make sense for you depending on you and your business structure. This video is for you if you are a real estate agent, in a team, or in a brokerage. So let me go ahead and minimize my video and go into blur mode to protect any private data. So you may not have known you can use three different follow boss numbers when you call or text leads. The three are personal number, the second is a company number, and the third is a team inbox. And you can select what your outbound number is when you click on the upper right hand corner and click my settings. If you scroll down, you can select what default outbound number you want. So what this does is the default number that shows up when you make calls or text messages through the follow boss, whether you text the lead or use the dialer. So you can see here, I have an option to use my personal number. That's what my name is next to it, a company number or a team inbox. I've opted to use a team inbox as that works best for me and my business. You may want to use a personal number because you are truly solo and you don't want anyone else to receive your incoming calls or text messages. You only want those private to you and you don't need an assistant to access your incoming calls or text messages or you have your assistant gain access to them by just logging into your account. But you may say, well, I do need an assistant who can check my incoming calls or text messages because if I'm not available, I want my assistant to answer the call and collect their question or answer their question if they can or I want, I have a, a team and I have other team members and I want them to take on the questions too. Then you'll want to use a team inbox. What a team inbox is, is it's a shared inbox and that's what I opt to use for. And the reason I use this is I make outbound dials through a very specific one hour segment each day. And then the rest of the day, I'm not making calls, I'm not answering calls, I need to move on my day and stay productive. So as a result, if anyone calls me back or texts me back during the other hours of the day where I'm not checking my inbox, if I didn't give my inbox access to anyone else because I'm heads down focused in other things, I mute this tab, I don't get distracted, I don't have it call my cell phone because I'm heads down busy in projects, then I don't want that person to wait 24 hours for me to call back and then even if they were okay waiting that long, we would be possibly playing phone tag where I try to call them back, they call me back later that next day and I'm not available again. So the way a team inbox works is it lets you give access to incoming calls and text messages to other members in your account. So if I go to the inbox and click team inbox, which is empty thanks to other members in my team, if you did have anything in here, an incoming text and a missed call or an incoming call, other people that you give access to this inbox to would see that. And so the way it works is if you go to the bottom left corner under inbox and click manage, you can manage your team inbox here. So the team inbox, I give it access to me, my sales consultant and admin and whoever's available can take the call. That way the lead is more likely to get a picked up phone call when they call back and that way they don't have to wait and get frustrated that they're not getting a call back. Although we're not a 24 seven hotline, at least they're a little bit more likely to get their call answered immediately or text answered in a reasonable time during business hours. So the way it works with a team inbox is if you receive a call back, let's say I call Jane and Jane doesn't answer her phone but I leave a voicemail and I text her. If Jane calls back because Jesse and Kendra also have access to the team inbox, the incoming call is not only going to ring my inbox on my follow boss account, but it's also going to ring Jesse's inbox and Kendra's inbox at the same time. And the way it works is it keeps ringing until one of us picks up the phone. So it's first come first serve. If Jesse picked up the phone, after a ring, then it stops ringing in me and Kendra's account. But if the call gets missed and none of us are available to take the incoming call, then it goes into the team inbox here and it shows up as a missed call for all three of us to see. And then we can then, whoever's available to call back and uh, call back and see how we could help that client. Another reason you may want to use the team inbox is if you're out of town, if you only use a personal number when you call, 
then other team members, when someone calls back, won't ring that team member's account like a team inbox does. Or if you have an assistant like myself and you want incoming calls to go to you or an assistant. But if you do use a personal number and you don't feel comfortable using a team inbox, then you can certainly, if you're out of town, you can temporarily change the phone number gets called back. So in the upper right hand corner, if you click settings, you can change the mobile phone it rings if you select for the dialer to ring a mobile number. So that way, if you're out of town for seven days and you say, okay, I normally take incoming calls, my assistant does not, but I want to take a better vacation, then you can temporarily change the number that rings. But keep in mind, it does have to ring a mobile number if you choose this option and you choose to go with a personal number. So your personal assistant needs to either have their own work cell phone or be comfortable receiving phone calls on their personal cell phone because the number you put in here is a number that gets ringed. And then if you scroll down, you would select to say, I want it to ring my settings phone, AKA the phone number I put up here instead of my desktop. Now you may be wondering, okay, I think I can work with either the personal or the team. So why in the world would there be a company number? That seems silly. What is the difference? So a company number acts a little bit differently. Whenever a lead calls that number, the incoming call only gets routed to the agent assigned to the lead. So let's say you have a team of agents and they all have their own assigned leads. They don't want any overlap. And so you say, okay, I want my leads to call me. I don't want them to talk to listing agent number two or buyer agent number two. I only want that lead to come to me. Then you would use the company number. So the way the company number works is if you use this number in marketing, on your website, on your business card, on signs in front of yards, if follow up boss recognizes that person because that person's number is already attached to a lead and it calls that number, the incoming call is only going to ring that assigned agent and not anyone else. But if the lead is not assigned to anyone, then it rings the entire company for whoever can take the call first. So I see three few different use cases. I would recommend using the team inbox if you're okay sharing leads with you and an assistant. But if you're not okay sharing incoming calls with leads, use the company number. So a lot of people use the company number on signs in front of houses or on their website so that it rings the assigned agent and then if not, it rings everybody so that anyone gets the chance to receive the lead. And then I would recommend only using your personal number if it's just you and you're solo and the only time your assistant ever needs to have access to your calls is if you're on vacation. And then depending on which option you select, you can then select how you want incoming calls to ring. So personally, I don't like my cell phone ringing. I want a separation between work and business, but I know that's not doable. I'm not a real estate agent, so it's a very different, very different use case for real estate agents. For me, I only have it ring my desktop and my other team members' desktops, and then it forwards to my follow up boss voicemail. So your voicemail is here and I've recorded it and I could click play and listen to it, but I don't like listening to my voice, so I'm not going to click on it. If you did not have a voicemail, it would ask you to record one. The other option is you can say, I want incoming calls to ring my cell phone and my desktop at the same time. I want it to ring for this long. And then it says selecting a ring time longer than 15 seconds may result in calls going to your settings, voicemail, AKA your mobile number instead of your follow boss voicemail. So just to be safe, I'll change it to 15 seconds if I use that option. But I'm gonna stick with this one. And then you can manage your company inbox just like before, where you go to inbox and then click manage, and then click the edit button and you can select what team members are a part of the company inbox. And in this case, I would add every team member that's in sales and production. Record a voicemail if someone isn't available to take the incoming call. And then from there, say if no one is available to answer, either go to the inbox voicemail, which I highly recommend. So that way, any voicemails that come in go into the inbox and not a personal cell phone where no one else sees. But you can also forward to a number and forward it to a, another number like a cell phone. I know this video was super fast paced and I didn't get really into the granular of training exactly like basic 101. This was more for advanced, quick 
tip of the type of phone numbers you can use. So if you have any questions, please leave your questions below in the comments and I'll be happy to respond during business hours like our business operates.